Good morning, New Zealand. Enjoy breakfast with a fresh cup of my Dilma. What a great way to start your day. Do try it. Kia ora everyone, Heidi Mo, welcome. It's Monday the 29th of April. It's great to have you with us. Thank you for coming. Morena, this is breakfast at 6 o'clock. Just ahead, a five day strike by junior doctors. Why, what do they want? What could it mean for you and your health? And is there a way through the impasse? What is life really like for Kiwis struggling the most? We begin a month long series of stories and interviews asking, what does the government's wellbeing budget need to achieve? And has National found the government's secret slushy fund or does, does it do, just need to chill out? Simon Bridges is coming in and joining us in the studio. Kod Parakwihi TNA, this is breakfast at 6 o'clock and here's Daniel with the news. Morena, good morning. A nine-year-old boy remains in a critical condition in Waikato Hospital following a horror crash in Atiyamuri. And that is your news and sport. I just want to say what a privilege and honour to have you here, John Campbell, and to be able to work alongside That's you. It's a lovely Welcome. thing to say. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you. I really Welcome appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I, a um, surreal. I'm speaking at Auckland uh, University's graduation today, and one of the last times I spoke at a graduation, who came up onto the stage to receive their degree? That was me. Oh, Daniel. Many moons ago, I got to shake John Campbell's hand oh. when I was camping. Shook your hand. Thank you. And walked off the stage. Does that mean you're the young man now? <laughs> well, I always felt like the young man on the show. Hey, what are you trying to say? <laughs> You're a magnificent young man. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for making me feel so welcome. And I'm really excited about what we're going to do together. Yeah, I yeah. thought nice. Hey, so yeah. to, be, to be honest, I've forgotten all about Jack. It feels like you've oh, never... Oh, don't say that! <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, hey, I did something uh, on, over the weekend. I put on the electric blanket on the bed. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I did it. There's a bit of a change in the year. You would have felt it over the weekend and you'll, it continues today as well. This is what your Monday is looking like. It is a wet start to the day in Southland and Otago with some heavy falls. First thing for Dunedin and Duomodu. That should ease for all of you this afternoon, um, but stronger winds will keep things a little bit cooler. 11 degrees in Queenstown and Alexandra. 12 for Dunedin and Invercargill. There's rain from the get-go out west with strong winds, possible thunderstorms and maybe even some hail first up along the coast. Uh, but that should all clear by lunch with some fine spells this afternoon. 17 high for Westport and Nelson. Pack a jacket or umbrella as you set off because you've got wet weather developing this morning, shifting east with heavy falls and some stronger southwesterly winds, particularly in Kaikoura. That should all ease this afternoon though. 14 degrees in Christchurch, 18 further north in Blenheim. You're looking at showers throughout the day uh, in the lower north, possibly heavy at times for many of you, although Wellington should see some fine spells in the middle of the day before rain arrives again late afternoon. 17 degrees for those of you in the capital, Kapiti and Levin. It's an overcast uh, day to the east with rain at times, mostly expected this morning in Hawke's Bay or this afternoon in Gisborne. Watch out for some uh, gusty winds as well. 20 the high in Hawke's Bay and Gisborne. There's rain developing this morning around Taumaranui, Taupo and Tokoroa and that'll carry you through to tonight. But the rest of the Bay of Plenty is nice to start with, with showers arriving after lunch. 19 degrees if you're in Whakatane or Tauranga. And the day is expected to start off clear in the upper north, but by midday you should see rain easing to showers for the afternoon. 19 the high uh, for Auckland, 20 in the far north. And then checking out tomorrow, there's a few isolated showers in the east uh, of both the islands and a little bit in the uh, South Island's far south, but the rest of the country looks pretty good. So yeah, a bit of a blip today, quite wet, but then by tomorrow things should mostly clear. Excellent. Yeah. What's the word? I'm Pike River re-entry on Friday. Can you see? So can by the end of the program, yeah, can you I'll, tell us I'll what's going to that out. Yep, I'll sort that <laughs> out for you. Thank you so much, man. It's so much fun. No, it's fine. <laughs> I haven't looked quite that far ahead yet, but I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. You're already yeah. bossing us around, John. Sorry. Oh. I'm, just, I'm just trying to cope with basic motor skills. <laughs> Yes, welcome. Good morning. Yeah. So does one of our hottest tourism destinations need a new airport? We'll tell you more after the break. Plus knowing when it's time to turn back, an important reminder on safety if you plan to go hiking. Can we just talk? Can we just talk? Talk about where we're coming Before we get up 
It is now 12 minutes past six. Welcome back to Breakfast on One. A complete tragedy is an understatement. That is the comment from police regarding a horror crash near Atiamuri, north of Taupo. Eight people have died and one is still fighting for his life in hospital. Our reporter, India Leishman, has more details. India, good morning. What is the status of that patient? Well, Daniel, that's a nine-year-old boy, and sadly, he's still in a critical condition at Waikato Hospital. This has been a really devastating... Yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Mayor David Truavis, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, our hearts go out to the families of those involved in this terrible tragedy. We want to talk about this. Yesterday's crash was uh, an undeniable tragedy, but one of just so many accidents recently. In fact, Indy's saying that April looks like uh, being the deadliest month on our roads in a decade. So this morning we're asked, what does need to be done to bring down our road toll? I actually, I mean, I, David makes a good point. There are passing lanes, but I don't like that stretch of road between Tokoro and Taupo. I think people get a bit itchy. Mm -hmm. They go a bit stir crazy. They try to overtake. You have traffic sitting at 80k and people want to get in front of them. And uh, also 80% of us are urban dwelling in this country, right? Mm -hmm. And we get out on the open roads infrequently during school holidays or whatever. And I don't think we're that good on them. Mm. We're not good, but I think it's because we're impatient. I used to say that Kiwis, especially Aucklanders, drove like it was a competition. They wanted to get there first, even if it was five minutes before mm. the next car in front. And I think it, actually, if, if we can actually look at ourselves a bit, relax. Stop being in such a rush, I know, you know? Is, and I totally agree. I think that is one of the key issues is that impatience. But I just don't know how you get, how you get people to change that behaviour pattern because it's, it is kind of ingrained in a lot of people. And there's so little margin for error. Yeah. I drove between Wellington and Auckland over Easter and so much of that road is just open, traffic coming fast towards you, close. And if you are distracted or you hit a wet patch or whatever and you drift even a tiny little bit, wham. Yeah, I, I'm with Hayley on this. I do believe it's more poor driving behaviour than anything else. And I think maybe more education, even though we're throwing so much in, we can argue it's the roads, but it's, it's really the person behind the wheel that you need to really sit back and think about what conditions you're driving to. And we've heard that uh, from the Topol Mayor talking about what police are trying to advise people. And mm. it's just not taking that advice in. So where do you go from that? Is it more education? Is it more money pumped in? Do we look at lifting the driving license age? Something to think about. Yeah. Mm. Well, we'd love to hear from you on this. Thank you. Well, making news this morning. Rescuers in Mozambique are rushing to help people trapped in floodwaters caused by Cyclone Kenneth. I'll bring you more at 6.30. Also ahead, a five-day strike by junior doctors starts today. Why is it so hard for the two sides to come to an agreement? And doing it tough, the skyrocketing number of Kiwis in strife. We do have a pretty striking figure. What's being done to change it? Is anything? to say something about your boy. You soak up half my brain, you should do. Don't call me up. I'm going out tonight, feeling good and now you're out of my life. Don't want to talk about us. Gotta leave it behind one drink in your Hi, good morning. Welcome, everyone. It's so nice to have you with us on breakfast. It is what time is it, Daniel? Whatever time it is, it's time. It's news time. <laughs> it is news time. Thanks, John. More than a good morning. The nine year old boy hurt in a crash in Atiamuri that killed eight others is now in a stable condition. The accident happened on State Highway 1 between Rotorua and Taupo yesterday. Taupo Mayor says the stretch of road hasn't experienced many crashes in the past. You're coming south uh, from Tokyo. Marathon and history to win the London Marathon. The Kenyan winning in a time of two hours, two minutes oh. and 38 seconds. Well, a marathon? Yes. It is the fourth... In two hours? Still reading, John. It is the fourth <laughs> time... Joking. When we're ready. It is the fourth time Kipchogese won Britain's Mo Farah. Finished fifth. Oh, that Mo That bugger's face just showing off, that guy. Isn't Doing he? a marathon in two, two hours. hours. He should come and do the, the Gold Coast marathon apparently is amazing because it's all flat and so apparently it's the fastest marath marathon in the world so he should come and do that and he could he could get the fastest wow so you think yeah i do i do i think i ran a marathon once <laughs> oh 
Oh, back to you. Yeah. The, the, but I, I did it in four hours 40. Yeah, it still seems fast to me. The, the, absolutely. But so he did it in less than, less half, than, that. than half that time. Unbelievable. That is insane. The fact that you actually finished it is amazing. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you. Anyway, let's crack into your weather and see what we're looking like. It is a wet start to the day in Southland and it's far south, but the rest of the country looks pretty good. And I looked ahead for you, John. Greymouth on Friday for the Pike re-entry should be mostly fine day. Just a little bit of cloud, but it should be pretty good. Yeah, it's going to be a very special occasion. Yes. We'll be there live for it. Thank you, Great. Maddie. I really appreciate it. No worries. Before seven, does the theft of 11 guns bizarre this from a Palmerston mm -hmm. North police station mean the crackdown on guns has been too quick? In other words, were they simply not prepared for the guns they were going to get? But next, a five-day strike by junior doctors starts this morning. How has it got so bad? This has been a protracted failure of negotiation. And can the two sides find middle ground? Both sides join us. Coming up. This is the capital this morning. Look at a little bit wet and a little bit blustery, and it's going to be that way throughout the day. You've got rain, possibly thundery as well, although that should clear uh, later on this morning to some fine spells, but you will just have uh, some strong northwesterly winds uh, in the mix. You're heading for a high today of 17 degrees. Windy old day in Welly. Today sees the start of the fifth and longest strike by junior doctors since January. It begins at 8 o'clock, so in just under an hour and a half, uh, an hour and 18 minutes, uh, and will continue until the same time on Saturday morning, 8 o'clock Saturday morning. We should say it's not happening in the Canterbury DHB because the demands of responding to the Moss shootings have been so immense. More on that and the extraordinary work done there later in the program, by the way. Joining us to discuss why it's all come to this and what's being done to minimise disruption to health services during the strike as a DHB spokesperson first, then a union spokesperson who was sitting beside me listening to the DHB spokesperson once we get started. Let's begin with Capital and Coast District, District Health Board uh, Chief Medical Officer Dr John Tate. Dr Tate, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. What's this about? What is the thing that you can't agree on that has led to a strike beginning at 8 o'clock and lasting five days? Uh, good morning. Um, the main issue is really about rosters and who should have the power of veto. The DH we hear from people who are working in the sector, like that, Dr Catherine Foster, although you are on strike for the next five days, right? I am indeed. Oh, thank you so much. Breakfast on one on Facebook and breakfast at tvnz.co.nz on the email. Well, here's what's making news this morning. Central Otago residents will meet today to discuss the future of the region's airport. We'll tell you what exactly is going on at seven. Also ahead, it's no, it's not exactly capital gains tax, but are slushies in prison the new political hot potato. And how Taylor Swift setting records despite everyone hating her new song. Not everyone, a lot of people like it. Kia ora, tonight on One, the Fair Go team is standing up for your consumer rights. And later, it's the season premiere of Criminal Minds. On two, Mick and Jody Ann have to pull all the stops in MKR. Then Bonnie and Christy give an old friend a second chance in Mom. Later on Duke, Lois takes decluttering to extremes in a double episode of Family Guy. Plus, stream the full season of The Bad Seed on demand now. Tamaki Makoto, this is Auckland this morning. Looking pretty nice and calm at the moment. It is going to be that way this morning. A little bit of cloud cover as you can see, but then around the day you can uh, expect a bit of uh, rain to set in uh, with a bit of a southwesterly change as well with some showers carrying through to tonight. You are heading for a high today of uh, Tacoma Iwa, 19 degrees. Here's what's making showbiz news. The Duke of Sussex has made a surprise visit to the London Marathon. Amid speculation, the Duchess could give birth any day now. Prince Harry cheered on runners, met with volunteers and presented medals to the winners. His wife Meghan stays near Frogmore Cottage with mum Doria on standby. Taylor Swift's music video for her new single, Me, is already breaking records. The clip clocked 65 million views within the first day of its release, making Swift the solo and female artist with the biggest 24 
uh, debut on YouTube to date. And Charlize Theron says she is shockingly available. The actress said in an interview she hasn't been in a relationship since 2015 and is tired of the single life, telling potential suitors they need to, quote, grow a pair and step up. That showbiz. Wow, Charlie, this is having a There's no luck for any of us. Thank you very much. It is four minutes to seven. Um, I'm here with Simon Bridges. Well, if anyone was wondering what National's new line of attack after the capital gains tax has been scrapped was going to be, you need to wonder no longer. Uh, Simon Bridges is with me now. Good hey, morning. Great. Now, after the announcement of, uh, I think it's nearly oh, over $1 million for slushy machines yep. in prisons yep. for prison officers, they kind of handed you a headline here, haven't they? Yeah, look, I suppose that's right. I mean, it is wasteful spending. I suppose the worry is whether it's, you know, slushy funds or Shane Jones slush funds, we're seeing more wasteful spending. It's taxpayers' money. And get involved and solve it. Thanks very much for your time. That's Simon Bridges, leader of the National Party. Thank you. Remember, if you want to send your feedback, check out our Facebook page. That's Facebook. Breakfast, forward slash. Forward slash. All the slashes are forward. <laughs> breakfast on one. Or email us breakfast at tvnz.co.nz. Still ahead on breakfast. What would make your life easier? The Prime Minister has said that this year is her year of delivery. So what should she be delivering? It's a big story. We're going to look at this a lot over the next month. We'll take you behind the scenes of the response to the Christchurch attacks. The frontline medical staff who saved so many people on that dark day. They did remarkable work. And why Charlie Theron has said set the internet alight with a new revelation about her love life. But right now at 7 o'clock, here's Daniel with the news. Morena, good morning. Thousands of junior doctors around the country will walk off the job today for their longest strike yet. It begins at 8... And I understand it's a busy half hour, so that is your news and sport. Cheers, Daniel. All Manny's got the weather for us. Yes, and it's a bit cold out there, but wet, but windy as well for pretty much everyone today as we kickstart the working week. It is a wet... It is, Maddie. Well, we may be heading into one of the most crucial months in the life of this government so far. Why? Well, in the Prime Minister's self-described year of delivery, May is when we'll get the so-called well-being budget. And we're getting more than that too. On Friday, we'll see the report of the Welfare Expert Advisory Group. Sounds dry, but it ain't. We spend about the same on social security and welfare as we do on health and education combined. And you'll struggle to find anyone anywhere on the political spectrum who thinks we're getting that spending completely. Right. So this month we're going to look at the problems the government is facing and whether its solutions stack up or whether, like Kiwi Build, hope is one thing and delivery another. Now we really want you to help us. So what do you want from the wellbeing budget? And do you ever run out of money before payday comes? Let us know and don't you don't have to use your name, but we do want to hear your story. We do really want to hear from you. This is very important and we are going to concentrate on it between now and the wellbeing budget. We're going to begin with a sense of the scale of the problem. And there is a measure that lets us know how many people desperately need one-off help when they've fallen short. More on that in about a minute and a half. But just up the road from us right now, the City Mission is serving breakfast to people who might otherwise start the day hungry. And at exactly this time on Friday morning, I called in. We have standard porridge every morning and then generally we have baked beans or spaghetti, um, sometimes corn, if we've, whatever we've got really. Debbie, who works with a kindness that resembles love, is on staff here, but the City Mission doesn't have nearly enough money for all the staff it needs. What's your name? Barbara. Nice to meet you, Barbara. Are you volunteering? I am indeed. And why are you volunteering? Oh, uh, I just had some spare time, so I thought I would. What a lovely thing to do. <laughs> I do it every Friday. More volunteers would be amazing. Um, we need 12 volunteers every day of the year, 365 days, including public holidays and weekends, to come in and help us prepare breakfast and lunch. So some of the people for whom life is toughest wouldn't even have the safety net of a spaghetti breakfast if it wasn't for donations and volunteers. We got a lot of donations at Christmas, but we're just starting to run really low on all of that now. It's dry here and warm, and they're welcome and they know it. But the number of New Zealanders not always getting by on the cards being dealt them has sharply grown in recent years. 
One really arresting measure of how tough things are for many people is a thing called hardship assistance. MSD defines it as immediate and specific needs that can't be met by people's own resources. So one-off grants as a rule, hardship assistance. Now, in the three months that ended in March, the March quarter, 472,000 such grants were paid out in three months. And what's really striking is that in the same quarter in 2014, the figure was less than half that. 2019, 2014. It's more than doubled in five years. And where's the money going? Well, the number one thing people want emergency grants for is food. Just all walks of life and all different people coming in, people that just can't manage every day at the moment, just on a, minim, on, on a wage that they're getting. People sleeping in their cars, children not having any school lunches. And at the end of the day, at the end of the payday, there is nothing left, nothing left. How much money do you have left each week after all the bills are paid? Nothing. And so debts mount all over the place and the repayments can be crippling. How much does Repacker yeah, currently owe? Probably about like 30,000 I even met the moment. So the 30,000 you borrowed because you didn't have enough money to get by yes. and now you don't have enough money to get by because you're repaying the money you borrowed. Exactly right. <laughs> Outside, Orange Sky are parked up. This van has a hot shower that's clean and safe and laundry facilities all free. And among the people who use it, families with children. When you have to choose between washing your clothes and feeding your kids, some people just, you know, washing just falls to the wayside. So for us to be able to come and help, um, you know, I think that's pretty special. So you see people who have so little money that the choice for them is between feeding their children or using the laundromat. They can't do both. 100%. And these can be people with jobs. Uh, if you're on minimal income, minimum wage, and you've got a, a say a $80 a week transport cost to get to that work, we'll do the sums. Minimum wage, take out $80 before you even start living, paying your rent, paying for food, perhaps your, your work clothes, things like that, well, there's, there's no change, there's no change. It's quite, it's quite hard to, to see, to know that this is going on here. Do you think that we all understand how tough life is for some people in this country? Nah man, look, I've, I've been doing this now for about two years and I think we, I still am learning how, how hard it is for people. Um, Right, for more on this, and we're going to talk a lot about this over the next month, we're joined now by the Māori Council's Matthew Tukaki, who is joining us from Wellington at Tanakwe. Uh, Matthew, it's so good to have us uh, have you with us. I know you had a busy weekend doing Māori Council, all of you together, I think, lots and lots of you meeting there in Wellington, right? And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you have a sense of the mood of maori dim, lest, uh, lest we forget every single Māori electorate went to Labour last mm -hmm. election. Is Labour doing what Māori at the bottom of the socio-economic heap, what all people at the bottom of the socio-economic heap need them to do? Well, I think like all gov, we have a plan. This is how we are going to go about solving this problem. Matthew Tukaki, uh, joining us live from the Wellington studio. We so appreciate your time this morning. The Prime Minister will be in with us tomorrow morning, of course, and we will discuss some of these things with her. Absolutely. Coming up next, the doctors and nurses who saved so many lives on March 15th. They're with us live. Look at you. Start your week right with one. First up tonight. 30. Also ahead, are we giving power to racist ex extremism by using the term white supremacy? Find out next. Straight into your news. The nine-year-old boy hurt in a crash in Atiamuri that killed eight others is now in a stable condition. The accident happened in Auckland, 20 in the far north. And then checking out tomorrow, there's a few isolated showers in the North Island's east and the South Island's far south, but the rest of the country looks pretty good. Hey, check out this as well. Rick Taylor sent in this beautiful Whoa. photo. This is the sunrise over Dargaville this morning. Mm. Absolutely gorgeous start to the day there. Yeah, Gorgy. Mm. Right, it's 20 minutes to eight.
Here are all the exciting things that will not make Daniel's news this morning. Would you pay $200 a night to stay in a giant potato? No. Well, if you're visiting Idaho oh, no. anytime soon, I would pay five you can. Bucks just 200 bucks a night is worth it. The Airbnb is decked out with a queen size bed, a kitchenette, lucky, fireplace, and air conditioning. Oh, John, come on, that looks good. Uh, I have to say, as a dog owner, <laughs> that <laughs> didn't look like a giant potato. No, it was it looked like the kind too. of thing you pick up with a plastic bag. It does, doesn't it? And uh, if spuds are your thing, why would you want to stain one? You just want to eat them, don't you? Yep. I mean, that looks ridiculous. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, budget flights can be a little uncomfortable at times, so spare a thought for these passengers. We really like this. Two former world's strongest man champs ended up, <laughs> ended up sitting side by side <laughs> on a flight from London to Scotland looking really cheesed off about it. No one on the plane would swap seats with either of them to give them more room. And oh. so this fine woman did. Uh, she was a good sport about it. She was smothered in... Oh, I hope you didn't sit like that the whole flight, though. No, I think that was just for the photo. Yeah. They There's got to be... Coming up, also, uh, the term white supremacist. Does it give power to the people uh, who see themselves as white supremacists? What the hell is going on? Where do these people come from? And why are they so angry? A really important interview before eight. Plus, big news for Fleetwood Mac fans. Jordan's got something special for you and showbiz. To breakfast, everyone. It's uh, 30 minutes to 8. Over the weekend, a gunman opened fire inside a Californian synagogue during a Passover prayer service, killing one woman and wounding three others. It's been reported the teen suspect posted a manifesto online where he wrote of being inspired by the Christchurch mosque attacks. This morning, University of Dayton Associate Professor and expert in racial extremism, Arthur Gibson, joins us now from Ohio. Uh, Arthur, we so appreciate you joining us on a Sunday in Ohio. Hi, thank you for your, for your time. Let's assume that really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. We're well, making news this morning. Junior doctors are about to strike for the fifth time this year at eight. We are live to Wellington Hospital as the five day long strike begins. And if you love Fleetwood Mac, you'll love what we're going to tell you right after the break. On this day in 2010, Oh My Gosh by Usher featuring Will I Am was number one on the Kiwi charts. It was the first single off Usher's sixth studio album, Raymond vs. Raymond. The song was met with mixed reception from critics who criticised the, uh, the use sorry, of auto-tune. The hate is gonna hate. Because some people here think it's a banger. That's not me, though. That is me. That's yeah, you were singing along, Maddie. I was. I love that song. Love Usher. I love that song, too. It's just so boring. It's a bit oh, dull, isn't Hayley. it? Oh, God. Don't start this again. <laughs> this is the Ed Sheeran of 2019. <laughs> anyway. Here's what's making showbiz news. Just in, Fleetwood Mac have announced a fourth and final Auckland concert. They'll be performing on Saturday, September 14, in addition to their Auckland and Dunedin shows. Tickets for the newly announced concert go on sale this Friday at midday. Don't miss out. Adele's reportedly already divorced Simon Konecki just weeks after publicly announcing their split. The pair said in a statement they're committed to raising their six-year-old son together lovingly, with the singer reportedly spotted kissing a mystery man out in New York recently. And fellow singer Wahine Charlize Theron says she is shockingly available. The actress said in an interview she hasn't been in a relationship since 2015 and is tired of the single life, telling potential suitors they need to quote grow up, grow a pair and step up. That showbiz. Go grow a pair of what? <laughs> I don't know. Could you start by wearing a top? Use your imagination, John.
Mm. Hey, but exciting news about Fleetwood Mac, isn't it? Great news. Terribly exciting. Are you a Fleetwood Mac fan, Jordan? Huge, love my, Fleetwood my, Mac. My mum and dad took me to see them at Eden, uh, Athletic Park, Athletic Park when I was a little boy. Wow. Yeah. Athletic Park? Yeah, yeah. Athletic Park, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there was a lot of passive marijuana consumption. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Passive, eh? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, well, I was about 12. <laughs> uh, feedback, lots of it coming in on the issue of uh, keeping safe on the roads. And by golly, this is something we need to deal with. People are suggesting lower speed, better judgment at keeping to your left, away from the centre line of the road. That's how head-on crashes, of course, from Pania Nepia. Thank you so much, Pania. Uh, yeah, there is no margin of error in the centre, is there, on no. many of our roads? You've got a, uh, a line of paint. Truly. A line of paint. And you've got two basically bullets mm -hmm. zooming at, yeah, each other, yeah. at each other. It's mm. terrible, terrible. But I've just been reading what causes most of the fatal crashes in New Zealand. It's loss of control, it's speeding, and it's driving under the influence of alcohol and drugs. And so whilst our roads aren't American standards, are they? They're not, they're not massive highways, but it is human error. So just be careful out there. Well, that and just distractions. People being distracted very easily, I think, in cars. Yeah, I mean, you hear it all the time, don't you? Don't text, don't, don't do it this on your phones don't but people still do mm. yeah. well if you've got any face uh, feedback for us check out our facebook page it's facebook forward slash breakfast on one or email us breakfast at tvnz.co.nz still ahead on breakfast is the government doing enough to tackle poverty and what needs to be d uh, in the well-being budget to lift their game Plus, how much damage does shift work do? Do you not great news for those of us uh, with wacky hours? And before nine, if you're worried about this power bill this winter, we'll tell you how to make sure that you're saving as much as you can. But right now, it is eight o'clock, and here's Daniel with the news. Yes, we are back on time, folks. Morena, good morning. John, no, no, no. And now we're late again. <laughs> Morena, good morning. Thousands of junior doctors around the country are now officially on strike. They've walked off the job for the working week. There you go. Over the line. Well done. This. Oh. 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 Did, he he forget, did, did he forget? He's it's left a three-hour show. <laughs> John Campbell, it's three hours breakfast. Where are you? Still you might another? have got stuck in the loo. Okay. It is quite difficult to work out when you can go to the loo yes. when you do this program because it is a long time, isn't it? Yeah. But I think. Oh, oh, oh here, here he is. comes. Come on. Come on in. Hey. Oh, really? really? <laughs> Still another hour to go, John. No, no, the greatest thing about this show is it's called breakfast and there isn't any. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? Is that where you were? Looking for breakfast? Oh, I was. John Daniel has been angling for catering on this show. Yeah, it's outrageous. I so just was having a wonder, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Apparently the boss says no, but you are here now, so right. maybe you can but throw your weight around. Did, have you done sport? I, I've done, done the whole thing. And, and sport. sport. Yep. Okay. Good old six minutes of it. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now and did you have the guy from the Phoenix? Yes. Saying that it's okay to lose 5 0 going into playoffs? Yeah, well. They're, they're going to playoffs against the top team in the league, yeah. and they lost 5 0. 5 0. That's no kind of preparation at all. I just no. thought someone needed to say that this Well, point. he is just saying, let's get over this right. well, and move on, and we can, we can prove that yeah. we can get better. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good enough for John. <laughs> well, if you were on the team, you wouldn't make it on the <laughs> So you're busy in the changing rooms. Be the player at 96 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> on the sideline eating all the oranges. Yeah, the yeah. Where's our yeah. star striker? John, how was the alarm this morning, by the way? Yeah, well, I, the, the, I didn't need the alarm because I woke up 17 times before. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, though, for, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah but it's a, it's a privilege to be here. We can, I mean, we've got three hours. We can tell stories. We can engage with the country. We can do work that matters. I'm very excited about it, so I'm prepared to get up early. That won't last. No, <laughs> yeah. no it's great to have you with us. We're uh, very, very excited. Uh, although, unfortunately, it's not the nicest day out there for many of us. It is a wet start in Southland and Otago. And that is your weather. Cheers, Maddie. Well, when is the Duchess of Sussex going to give birth? Oh. Royal watchers are waiting in anticipation as Prince Harry continues to make solo appearances about town. The ABC's Lama Hassan takes a look. It is nine minutes past eight. the 29th of April and here's what we're celebrating with you Aotearoa. Today is the day that Swathi Baska celebrates a birthday, a birthday. Her daughters Joshna and Dashna say she's the most precious oh. thing to them. That is gorgeous. Happy birthday. Today's the day Ruby Ulrich turns 
10. <laughs> go, go, Ruby. Happy birthday. It's a very cool photo. Today is the day Dylan Joan turns three. She'll be celebrating with family and eating uh, happy hour pasta at Coco's Cantina tonight. Uh, that is not her, as you can imagine. Maybe she's shy. Yeah, she's very shy. <laughs> uh, have the best time. I think actually that was planned by Coco's kid. I don't think that kid exists. <laughs> Today's day. Today is the day Griff turns 11. His mum, Ali, says he was born with a severe congenital heart defect and has had several surgeries and valve replacements with more to come. He amazes her every day and he is super positive with all he faces. Griff, you are a brave young man and from the breakfast team and from your family and all your loved ones friends, we wish you the happiest of birthdays. Go on, Griff. Today's the day that Keelan Sydney Te Ariki Christiansen starts school. What a name. Did I say that right? Have an awesome day. Big boy in the house. Wow. Two other people starting school today are best friends Neve Ballard and Olivia Delaney. They've been BFF since they were born. Uh, that's pretty cute. And they can't wait to start school together at Vauxhall School. Good luck on your first day, you big girls. Today is the day Nicole and Angel are reunited uh, in Harrisonburg, Virginia, after spending five months apart. Nicole is hoping the weather in New Plymouth uh, won't be causing havoc with her flights. And today is the day Jack has his first day of daycare. Mum Alicia is returning to work after being on maternity leave. Gosh, it's going to be hard, but you'll be fine. We hope you both have a great first day. Right, and as you know, we do this all again tomorrow. So if you've got something to celebrate tomorrow, wait till the morning, then send us an email. Breakfast at tvnz.co.nz with today's the day in your subject line and we'll put it on air. Coming up next, we're going to talk about two of the subjects we've raised this morning. One, white supremacists, where they come from on, and, uh, and how to deal with them. Also, the issue of those at the bottom of the heap in New Zealand. The much lauded wealth, uh, wellbeing budget is nearly here. We'll ask whether the things which need to be done will actually be front and centre. Aretha Franklin released her single and billboard song of the year, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Yes, that is Respect, written by Otis Redding. It became the signature song of uh, for Franklin. Her cover was a landmark for the feminist movement and is often considered one of the best songs of the R&B era. So, so important for the civil rights movement at the time in the United States mm -hmm. too. Here was a strong, powerful, chart-topping African-American woman. Pretty magic statement. It is magic. Yeah. I mean, music can make Damn such a straight. difference, Damn can't straight. it? straight. Yeah, absolutely. Right, hardship is apparently increasing in New Zealand somewhat counterintuitively at the same time as the country is led by someone who advocates for a kind of form of government. So what's going wrong? The measure we're using is the Hardship Assistance Grant. Now, they've more than doubled. So the last quarter, I think from memory, 470,000 uh, compared to the same quarter in 2014, less than half that. Here to set the world to rights by half past eight <laughs> is this morning's <laughs> Breakfast Club. And we're really delighted to have Indira Stewart and Jenna Ann Casanada uh, here Morning. on the couch with us. Morning. Morning. It's lovely to have you both here. Thanks. Before we go... Oh, it's Jahan, Kasanada and Indira. Uh, Stuart, thank you very much. Pleasure. Well, coming up in your news this morning, parents are being urged to take note of measles symptoms as the new school term gets underway. We'll have more on that at 8.30. Also ahead, how to make sure you're getting the best deal on powering your home this winter. And has Posh been playing hard to get the whole time? We've got all the backstage goss from the Spice Girls' upcoming concert. Kia ora, welcome back to breakfast. It is
others now. It's nearly 8.30 and here's Daniel with the news. It is not, it's 8.32. <laughs> Good morning. Thousands of junior doctors around the country are now officially on strike. They've walked off the job half an hour ago for the working week. Our reporter Imogen Wells is live for us now from the Cape, raking in a huge 1.2 billion US dollars in global ticket sales. It did so in just five days. Now the fastest movie to break the 1 billion barrier. Avengers Endgame broke the record set by the franchise's own Infinity War last year. I've got the Wilson. I've got the most boring theory on this. Here we go. Well, okay. no, it's really important. Someone says this. It's dollar amounts, right? So tickets to the movies are more expensive than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. So when I was a kid and we went to Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, <laughs> it was 20 cents. So you weren't going to get to a billion dollars. Well, no. So in order for that figure to have meaning, yeah. Daniel Fatara needs to be inflation adjusted. That's John very Campbell, good. the no, world's most boring true. man. That is, st you still got to admit, though, more than a billion yeah. dollars, that is a lot of money. And there's a lot more people. Oh, I, don't, I can't remember. We used to stand for the national anthem. <laughs> Oh it's a God. long time ago. It was probably wow. a penny. <laughs> 20 cents a ticket. I don't pennies. believe that. I think five dollars a ticket back. No, it was in my never day. five bucks. Really? Yeah. Well, when was your day? Probably in the eighties. I remember queuing up down at the Savoy in Christchurch and buying a ticket. And they used to have intermission yes. in between. Yeah. And then they used to sound the wee ding 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 ding, 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 ding. and you all have to run back in. Yeah, that's right. The Pop nibble. You'd go out to the nibble nook. Yeah. <laughs> Nook. We'd go get you chopped at ice cream, wouldn't Donna, we? I got a fact for you. Yeah. The the actual highest grossing film in history, if we inflation in, adjusted, if, if inflation adjusted, yeah. Gone with the Wind. <gasps> yeah. Mm. Old people. One point eight billion dollars. If we really? adjust, if we rounded to inflation for wow. that. Wow. I've mm. never seen Gone with the Wind. Is that, is that terrible? I'll have to do it. I'm not sure if I have or not. And here you were proclaiming, <laughs> oh, old people, and you haven't even seen the movie. <laughs> right, let's keep moving. Five. Number five. Let's just look that up, please. Yep. Yeah, John, I just said my year number five. Oh, good. Yeah. All right, let's move Thanks, on, Jordan. Just ahead. Has anyone heard the new Eldest Harding album? No. Just ahead. That's very, very good. Looking forward to that tomorrow, Jordan. Thank tomorrow. you very much. Just ahead. We're talking all things power and how you can make cuts to your bills right away. <laughs> Don't overthink it Let it go and try to trust the feeling You're Our nutritionist. Thank you. Right, that is all from us today, John Campbell. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Did it's you wonderful. Enjoy it? Yeah, very much. And I'm going to enjoy what we're going to do over the next weeks and months. And yeah. So am I. Yeah. It's you so and me and everyone out there. Thank you very much. Thanks we'll everyone for being with us and have a wonderful day. Yeah. <laughs>